Boost TV is a computer vision library, and what this video is going to cover is using Boost TV on the Raspberry Pi. First, we'll go over how to set up your Raspberry Pi for Boost TV, which is fairly simple, and then how to evaluate if you want to use Boost TV using examples and demonstrations. And then finally, at the end, we will see a full coding project where we open a Raspberry Pi camera and use it to scan QR codes. Since Boof CV is a Java library, the first thing you want to do is make sure you have the correct version of Java installed. To do that, open the terminal, type java-version. Raspbian should have Java pre-installed, and in this case it's running Java 11. Java 11 is the recommended version for running Boof CV. Um, last year when I did some testing, I discovered that Stretch, the version of Raspbian out at the time, had installed a version of Java which was not optimized for ARM processors. Turns out if you actually want Java to run fast, you need to make sure it's been optimized for the platform you're running it on. So I'll just go over the workaround for that. First, uh, you need to go to BoofCV's website, click on the Raspberry Pi instructions, and then click on replacing the JDK. So if you're running an older version of Raspbian, the way you get around that is to download a um, version of the JDK which has been optimized for the Raspberry Pi, which would be ARM32 with hard float. Decompress it, put it into a location that you like, and then update your path, log out and log back in, and you should now be using um, the newer correct version of um, Java. However, if you're using Buster, at least as of April when I tested it, you do not need to do any special modifications. It just works, and um, life is good. So let's say before you start creating a project booth CV, you want to test it out first. Fortunately, you can do that um, by using the pre-built examples and demonstrations. So go back to Raspberry Pi page, click on download and run demonstration, and then click on examples and demonstrations. This now will download it. I'm going to cancel. I'll just go away. Okay, since I already have it downloaded, that's why I canceled. Let's go here, go to download. You can see I have um, boof demonstrations unzip. And then if I had done this the first time, I would just unzip it. So let's go to here and do java-jar demonstrations. First, we're gonna look at examples. So examples are simple code that's designed to learn from. While demonstrations, um, is a lot more involved and you cannot just learn from it at least easily. Deform key points. That one looks interesting. Uh, I just click twice. It might open it twice now. Hopefully not. Okay, good. So this is a demonstration line running. You can see it's distorting this happy person. If I go here and click on source, it's going to show me the source code. And this is true for all of the examples. And if I click on GitHub, it's going to take to me to the source code on GitHub. Go back here. Let's quit this. Go back to terminal. Open the demonstrations jar again. Go to demonstrations. And let's open up one of the object trackers because those are kind of fun. And now I'm going to click play. So you can see here, so I'm showing the frames per second. So the actual image processing is very fast. Um, it's 280 frames per second on the Raspberry Pi 4, since that's the Raspberry Pi I'm running here. Now, um, one thing to notice is that this video is also playing back fast. So for the most part, all these demos and examples will work just off the bat. However, um, IO is a little bit flaky. So this is doing, I'm going to open up another example now. Let's open the QR code. I want to demonstrate this point. One issue is that um, the default Boost CV installation does not contain everything you need to run on Raspberry Pi smoothly. It's targeted towards desktop. So if I play this movie, it's going to be very slow. But the image processing will be fast. Um, the reason why it's slow is because this is an MP4 and I'm using jcodec to play it back. jcodec is a uh, mp4 decoder written entirely in Java. It's not hardware assisted at all, and it runs much slower than ffmpeg, which is what it normally uses to run. 
So you can see image processing here takes about 30, 40 frames per second, or uh, milliseconds. So that's about, I don't know, between 25 and 30 frames per second. I should also point something else about Quark of Java. Let me kill and restart this. So the first time you run Java, it actually runs very slow. So it took 520 milliseconds to process this image. But when I click MS, I'm running it again. See how much the time decreased. So after a couple of iterations, it's down to like 30 milliseconds of occasional spike up in 50. Um, so keep that in mind when you're working with Java. The first couple of iterations will be slow. Next, let's go on to the example project. So I'm going to close this. We'll come back to it later, though, because there's some other cool stuff I want to show you. And then there's the very top. It says simple programming example. Let's open up that. Now, what this is going to do is provide a way, like some has a pre-built script for um, generating an application which will scan QR codes from the Raspberry Pi camera. And then there's another one for taking Raspberry Pi camera and opening up in the window. Now, the weakness of using Boof CD on um, Raspberry Pi is that the drivers for video and everything hasn't totally worked out. Uh, so in this demo, it's going to be limited to 10 frames per second. Another person on the Boost CV form says they got working at 30 frames per second, which is the max frame rate. Um, I've not been able to replicate that yet. And then in the past in person, I have um, been able to get like full frame rate with pretty much nothing going on. But I kind of wrote the driver myself um, and did the transfer. Um, I'm using WebCap Capture here, which is a great library, very easy to use. But it's like a wrapper on top of a wrapper and you're very abstracted from what's going on. So let's look at the build script. So here's one um, big advantage of working with Java. So you don't need to install the library, build it from scratch. When you, you can use the latest version of Java, all you need to do is like update this version right here and then it'll download um, whatever you need automatically. So here I'm using Gradle, but you can use Maven. And I think you could even use Ant. And those are all like build environments. They're kind of similar to um, make files and uh, uh, CMake, as well as uh, Bazel, if you're in the C++ world. So here it says to download all these jars, and then um, this is a key one here. Here it's downloading a webcam driver for Raspberry Pi. This will enable a webcam to work. If you tried running the webcam in those um, demonstrations earlier, it would crash because that's, this is a um, desktop build. So it's kind of like BoostTV works pretty much right off the bat with very little effort, except for a few things. But this is a Raspberry Pi, so having some do-it-yourself um, work is kind of expected. Now let's look at the source code itself. Go to Java. So a webcam in the window. This is very simple. You just give it the driver, and then you tell it to open the webcam. What this does is it says um, open up pretty much the first webcam it sees at the resolution of 640 by 480 and then take every frame and then show in the window. So I create the window here, adjust the size, and then just continuously updates it. So let's see what that looks like when you build it. Oh, I forgot one critical step. Let's go back here. I need to check the source code out. So grabbing that, go here. Go back. I first is I already have this downloaded, so I'm just gonna do it. Clone. Okay, let's go inside. And then let's look at the instructions here. Quick and dirty. Move this to the side. So let's open the webcam to create all W show jar. Now on desktop, Gradle is actually pretty fast. It's not as fast as other ones, but this would just take a few seconds. On Raspberry Pi, this is going to take like a minute. So I'm probably going to edit this out. Okay, done. Here I am. I'm going to do next step, java-jar, scan. Sorry, I was looking at the wrong instructions, so show jar. So here's what the Raspberry Pi camera is seeing. 
This is limited right now to 10 frames per second, and that's the kind of driver issue I was kind of mentioning. There's no technical reason why I can't be playing this back in Java at uh, the full 30 frames a second. Um, and this view is yeah, like nice and easy to work with. Now let's build it um, into a QR code scanner. Control ski. Instructions for that. Gradle W. Scan QR jar. While that's building, let's go back up here. Scan QR. Now a bit more is going on. I'm loading the Raspberry Pi camera so this works and doesn't crash. Opening it as before. Here, I am creating the QR code detector. I'm using a 8-bit grayscale image. BlueCV is more strict on the image type. It doesn't hide that from you. That's to encourage um, you to use the same image type and avoid converting, because that's kind of a pain and kills performance. Some bookkeeping for printing out frames per second. And then um, grabbing the image, converting into the format that BlueCV understands, processing it, uh, while seeing how many milliseconds it took, computing the average milliseconds using a fading average um, formula, and then printing out uh, some diagnostic information like the size of the image, how many uh, milliseconds it took, and then um, average um, frames per second. And then if it sees a QR code, I'll print it out. So let's go run that. Scan QR. So you can see right here, it's taking about, I don't know, seven to eight milliseconds to process um, the thing, while it's limited to frames per second due to that driver issue. And I just happen to have a QR code handy. I will use this. This is a very big QR code. I was using it in a project um, in the past because I wanted to scan it from, I don't know, like something like 30, 40 feet away, if not farther. Okay, so I can detect it now. Let's take a little bit of experimentation because I can't actually see what's doing, but it's scanning it just fine as you can see on the screen. Let's move away. Go. It also takes a little bit longer because um, when the CC QR code has to decode it, but it scales pretty nicely with number. Um, it could easily handle like 100 QR codes in view at once. A uh, Raspberry Pi might start getting a little sluggish, but considering right now it's running at, I don't know, um, almost. 100 frames per second. Uh, it's probably more like 90 frames a second. That's pretty good. All right, uh, now let's go back to the demonstrations and show you some cool stuff. So Boof CV tends to focus more on image processing, 3D geometric computer vision, processing markers, pretty much everything but the machine learning side. So that would be all deep learning. There is some deep learning, but um, you're really better off using another library. Uh, eventually, it might get updated, but um, yeah, BoofCV excels in other areas. So let me show you one thing. So first, let's look at some story visual odometry, which also will be a hint about what I'm project I consider doing on a Raspberry Pi myself. So waiting for it to load. Here it goes. Okay. So in the default settings, it will be a little bit sluggish. Um, you can see the process time's going down. It's like 200-ish um, milliseconds. It fluctuates a lot. And then this view over here, um, right is the camera view, and it's estimating the camera's motion as it goes forward. And the left is showing like features. But let's change the configuration a bit. So let's turn off bundle adjustment. Reduce the number of ransack iterations. Let's make that 40, and then tell this to update. So it's actually running much faster now. Um, it's running at, I don't know, probably averaging around 10 hertz. Oh, this is where demonstration window is. So it's actually printing out some profiling information showing you where the slowdown is and spawn and spawning new tracks. So when it spawns a new track, that's actually pretty slow. And then the, um, the nominal pace is pretty fast, so it's a little bit cyclical. But let's look at this 3D view. So you can easily see where it moved. And then here is the sparse reconstruction created from these key points over here. So when it estimates the camera motion, it tries to estimate all the static objects in the scene also. Not going to go into too much details. 
but um, it basically was able to create like a sparse reconstruction to the scene and estimate how the exterior cameras were moving. Let's take a look at another view. So here's one outside. As you can see, it's going through. That's the main motion. And um, the coloration here indicates distance. So the more red it is, the closer it is. And the more yellow it is, the farther away it is. You can also tweak the visualizations a lot, like only showed in layers. These are the features that it's using. Um, and then do some things like, I don't know. So I'm changing how far away from the path when the first saw it, it'll render the points. It can make it less cluttered and easier to see. Change the age of the points. Okay, well, I'll go over all this in another video. And then another thing that's pretty cool that I can do is um, this three view reconstruction. So most of the time when you're taking a bunch of photos and computing a point cloud and doing um, figuring out the shape of the object, you use lots of photos. Um, because it was a little bit more difficult, I um, brought this up using three and decided to see how well I can make it work. I just reduced the image size so that it runs faster on uh, a Raspberry Pi, but this will still take like 20 seconds. So what's doing now is process images, it computed key points inside and then it matched them all up. And now it's doing a whole bunch of math, um, pretty much along the lines of trying to estimate the camera parameters using these natural features, which isn't trivial. It's actually very unstable. So some of these examples won't work if you tweak the settings and if you tweak it again, they will work. Um, it's just like the nature of the beast. I'm hoping to figure out a way to make it more stable. That's kind of an open research problem, um, which probably is what I find interesting. So here's the computer point cloud. Um, I use three views because you get much more stable uh, self-calibration, but I'm only using two views to do the point cloud. And then you also can save this <coughs> um, and look at other stuff. So there's lots of demonstrations like this. Uh, I'll also show the disparity because it's kind of cool. Okay, so that's the disparity image. Uh, and yeah, so there's a lot of examples here. You can even search through, let's say, um, color. Show color model, not the most exciting one. Um, enhance. So that's it for now. What I've done is gone over how to set up your Raspberry Pi for Boof CV, which is pretty straightforward. Just pretty much if you're using an older version, make sure you're using a installation of Java, which doesn't suck. Otherwise, you just um, create a uh, Gradle build script or whatever build um, language you like the most. And then include Boof CV and start coding. It will just download and just immediately start working. For reading videos and working with webcams, additional effort is required. You're going to have to um, tweak it, things a bit and install some like FFmpeg drivers for it. Um, I'm not gonna go over that here yet, but in theory, you can just um, tell it to include the ARM32 FFmpeg and then video playback should speed up quite a bit. Um, so that's it for now. Thank you for watching.